Alright everyone, how's it going? This is Rex for here. Welcome back to part 4 of my anime series tutorial series for beginners. In this episode, we're going to go ahead and go over um, finishing this character as well as stylizing him a little bit. As you can see, I've uh, kind of messed with these values over here. I'm going to go and set those back to their initial colors. There we are. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and focus on finishing up this character, stylizing him a bit, and even creating our first ever texture. So that should be pretty fun. And before I actually get into the tutorial, I just want to let you guys know that I will be going a bit faster in the tutorial, a bit fast paced, um, because I don't really want this video to take a long time. And to tell you guys the truth, and I know I got a comment about this, and I do apologize for mentioning this if it kind of annoys any of you guys. And I know it's, you know, someone said, oh, it's unprofessional, but, you know, I really don't care, um, at least in this uh, kind of point in time um, for this certain scenario. But basically, I did a couple of takes of this video, and um, the thing is that this is a pretty simple thing to do, only I somehow, whenever I do these videos, I just feel the need to kind of explain to you guys all of this different stuff, and... Um, I really should not be doing that as much as I do do, and it, I do admit it kind of is a bad habit of mine. Um, however, I just kind of have that tendency to uh, talk a bit more um, than I should need to do. So anyway, I'm just going to be going a bit more faster, kind of going over things um, a bit more um, in a faster style than I normally do, instead of kind of explaining all every little thing that I do. So anyway, um, and it's all in hopes to hopefully make this video um, a bit less time consuming because um, I know that can get a bit annoying to some, uh, to some of you guys. So anyway with that in mind let's go ahead and just begin. Alright so what we're going to go ahead and start off with is the character's limbs here, the feet or rather the legs and the arms here and to do that we're going to go ahead and go over to the little layers palette here and go to the new layer vector and click and drag it right under your body layer if you haven't already and what we're going to go ahead and do is make it so his arms as well as his legs appear below his body um, just so it's not outwards on his body and because I mean that would look kind of weird right so what we're going to go ahead and do is make sure that your new layer is below both your head and body layer double click on your new layer we're going to go and name this leg underscore L for uh, capital L mind you for uh, left and we're going to go over here to our draw shape tool click on the rectangle option if you haven't already uh, rather if it hasn't been selected already and go ahead and click and drag in your character's body here and I uh, get it something around yeah, I'd say right there's good and you'll notice that I put my character's leg in his body a little bit and some of you guys might be saying Rex why did you do that I mean isn't that like kinda weird wouldn't you want it something like that and the reason is no I would actually not want something like that and really quickly before I actually show you guys uh, the example of why I would not like it like that is because or rather <laughs> it's because um, is I'm gonna go ahead and go over to this little tool here this little um, uh, kind of black X tool in the layer subsection called the um, origin or rather the set origin and basically the origin is this little kind of arrow thing right here and I'm gonna simply click and drag it on the top of my leg layer and the origin is basically where everything kind of gets affected from and so let's say I have my origin uh, over here and I go over here to my translate layer tool and it looks pretty normal right like I'm moving my uh, normal leg layer right it looks pretty good however you'll notice that when I go over here to my uh, rotate layer it doesn't necessarily rotate from my leg layer itself it rotates from this thing right here which is the origin as I just explained so what we're gonna go ahead and do is simply click on this little black X here the set origin option click and drag this right on top of our leg layer there it doesn't have to be in a specific uh, kind of area and now you notice when I rotate my little leg layer um, everything rotates from the top of it and that is exactly what I want so you can kind of uh, I guess uh, switch that to where you want and uh, we're probably going to be getting to that a little bit later so I won't really touch on it too much now but we're going to go ahead and go to our translate layer tool move that up a little bit in our body and um, the reason why we're going to be doing this is because when we kind of rotate our little leg here you'll notice right now when I'm rotating it everything looks pretty natural right pretty fine except for when I go like this it looks a little bit weird but you know whenever I move it it looks pretty good however if I were to move it down here on the edge of my body layer you'll notice when I move my little layer here, my leg layer, that you'll see the edges of the leg sticking out of the body and we definitely don't want that. So what we're going to go and do to fix that is, as I just showed you guys, going to move it up just a bit there in our body. And that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter to deselect those points. 
Alright, and everything looks fantastic there, so now what I'm going to go ahead and do is, instead of creating a whole other leg, trying to reposition it and kind of eyeball it to the correct position and such, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do what's called duplicating layers. Now, duplicating layers in Anime Studio is uh, a bit similar to duplicating layers in something like Photoshop or um, even in Game Maker, for those of you guys who watch my Game Maker tutorials, uh, kind of duplicating uh, events or actions, um, or pretty much duplicating anything in uh, any program, I guess, um, that kind of revolves around copying. And, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. All you do is select your layer down here, your little layers palette. And in this case, it's going to be my, or in this case, rather, it's going to be my leg underscore L, or leg left. And I'm going to go over here to the uh, duplicate layer, to the little kind of uh, blank sheet of paper with the red plus sign here. Click it once, and as you'll see, we've now duplicated the same leg layer that we were previously lo or l losing, using, hopefully we're not losing legs, um, but anyway, we're going to go ahead and double click on that, and you'll notice also when you duplicate the layer, we have a little number 2 next to our layer name, and that is basically put there to say that um, you've duplicated two layers now, and um, if we were to do that again, say 3, and so on, and so on, and so on. Um, but we're going to go ahead and delete these really quick and keep the leg underscore and we're going to go and put a capital R there for leg underscore right and you go and hit enter or OK and um, what we're going to go and do now is you'll notice even though we've duplicated our layer we can't really see it on the uh, on the screen here and the uh, the reason for that is because for one we've duplicated our layer and it is appearing right above our original layer so of course it's going to be right on top of our original layer which would kind of um, kind of I guess change some things in how we kind of perceive them um, but also when you duplicate uh, when you duplicate rather a layer in anime um, you can basically um, I guess have it in the same exact position as it was before. There's not really a way to change this um, but let me go and show you guys an example of what I mean. When we go to our translate layer tool and uh, click on our um, newly duplicated layer and kind of just move around anywhere on the screen you'll see now that we are now moving our brand new layer and this whole time it was just on top of our old layer and this can be used for a number of things, um, you know, say if you want something in the exact position that it was before and you want to duplicate and then just slightly move it, um, it can be used for that. But what we're going to go and do is, what I just did here is hold shift, or held shift rather, and kind of just copied or clicked and dragged over to the uh, right side here so it keeps on kind of a horizontal snapped line there. And this way you don't really have to go around kind of repositioning it exactly where it was and stuff. And um, you can easily just kind of maneuver it back to the original position. And the only thing you might have to worry about is this little area over here. Um, but that's not really too big of a concern to me right now. So that is pretty good. Now, since this is a really simple character, he's all boxy and stuff, um, we're going to go ahead and simply just duplicate our leg layer for our arm layer here. Do that once and click and drag. And I'm going to go ahead and name this arm underscore L capital L mind you for arm score left and do the same thing translate layer uh, hold shift click and drag to the left click and drag up vertically and go over to our rotate layer here hold shift to get on that little snap same thing rotate layer bring it down a little bit while holding shift just get everything a bit precise and make sure it's a little bit inside my character's body just so we don't have that one problem with the edges maybe a little bit in more there alright and there we go that looks fantastic now I'm gonna go and do the same thing again Duplicate our newly created arm layer, and I'm gonna go ahead. And I'm gonna go ahead and rename this arm underscore r. Uh, <clears throat> wow, I really don't know what that was. There's like some something in my throat there. <clears> throat> uh, well, it is allergy season, so that probably explains it, at least for me. Uh, but nonetheless, sorry for that little uh, interruption there. Um, what we're gonna go ahead and do now is simply now. There's two ways that we can do this here. Um, what we can do is use our translate layer tool, click and drag over here, rotate layer, move it all the way over, translate layer, move it all the way in, kind of move between layers here, make sure that everything checks out okay. Or what we could do, undo that here, control Z, alright, we could go up here to, once we have our layer selected and our translate layer tool, um, or any one of these little layer things here selected. We go up here to our little layer options, and I really don't know what to call these, but what we can do is let's go ahead and click the flip layer vertically. All right, and once you do that, you'll notice that when we flip that, instead of going, you know, translate layer, flipping it over, and then putting it back, it simply just flipped our layer to the uh, horizontal, or I guess in this case, vertical selection, which is kind of odd, but um, basically just kind of flipped that over and made it so that we don't have to go through all the hassle of kind of configuring it and then putting it back together. So now all we need to do is go to translate layer and just kind of move it in 
and there we go. That looks fantastic. We have our little character, we have our arms, we have our legs. Everything is exactly where it's supposed to be. And um, there we go. That is pretty much how to work with that. Now, what we're going to do is simply create some styles for our character. And basically, when I say styles, I mean color in our character. And we're not going to get too complex with this. However, we are going to create some textures, um, at least one texture. And I'll show you guys how to do that. And uh, this is a really fun part of Anime Studio, the coloring of your characters. You know, making your characters is pretty fun, but actually getting some color on there is just really cool. So what we're going to go and do um, to actually do this here is click on our head layer. We're going to go and start off with our head layer first. There we are. And um, <laughs> get a break from that little fast talk in there. <clears throat> Give my throat a uh, slight one second break there. Uh, but what we're going to go and do now is go over here to our little styles palette. And as I mentioned in the first episode of this tutorial series, um, I'm not really going to be using this stuff up here. This is kind of for the sake of organization. And um, with this simplistic of a character, we don't really need um, too much organization in the uh, styles here. And, you know, I never really use them anyway. Um, of course, you guys can if you want to. You guys can kind of get into that if you guys feel that you need to organize your styles. But for now, we don't really even need to get into that. So, um, and I don't think I'm really going to get into that for the rest of the tutorial series. Um, but, you know, just putting it out there that you can use that. And it's pretty much just for the sake of organization as far as I'm concerned. Um, so what we're going to go and do now is down here on our very first little color kind of pill shaped thing here. Um, where it's the white color. We're going to go and click on that once. And you'll see now that we get a little thing up here that says the color picker. And basically what we can do here is just click and drag anywhere on this little uh, kind of color palette here. Same goes for here. We can change up the opacity. And uh, some of the different values here. And um, I'm going to go into this in just a moment here. But what we're going to go and do is just use kind of like a skin color here. So I'm going to get something right around here. There we go. That looks pretty good to me. Alright, and what we're going to go and do now is apply this to our head layer. Now, I'm going to go a bit fast after I've actually done this here, but first I'm going to go and show you guys, you know, a bit slowly how to do this. But afterwards, I'm just going to kind of blaze through a little bit, just because it is a pretty simple thing to do. And I did go over it a little bit earlier in the um, first episodes of this tutorial. So anyway, um, as I mentioned in the first episode of this tutorial, or the second episode, I can't remember which one, um, these little color options here are pretty much all the same they pretty much do all the same thing although I tend to use the create shape tool here um, however you can use the paint bucket or paint bucket or I believe the select shape tool um, however with the color or rather with the create shape tool um, hotkey U um, all you need to do is click on your layer hit the spacebar to apply the color up here and um, enter to confirm that and it's just that simple and you know I guess you can as I mentioned you can use some of these colors over here I just kind of am used to using the create shape tool so that's pretty much how I use that or why I use that rather um, but now let's say we're gonna go ahead and, and that looks good but we want to go ahead and get rid of this black outline and kind of change it to another color well how would we do that well what we would do is as you can see here um, it's kind of blurred out I guess um, but or faded out rather but this says fill down here and this says stroke down here and the lines in anime studio at least in the styles palette are considered as strokes now to change that stroke color you would simply go over here to this little um, again pill shaped palette here and click wherever you like and let's say I actually want to go ahead and get just a darker color of this current color that I have how you would do that is click on your current color and a simple way to do it is just copy and paste this value so go ahead and highlight it here with your mouse control C on your keyboard alright go over here to this little uh, stroke color here go over here again to this little uh, value number of your color here and control V to paste and as you can see now we have our, our, our nice little color I was gonna say neat and nice at the same time nice <laughs> there we go um, but anyway we have our nice little color here that we have created or rather uh, found in our last little palette here and we're going to simply take down one of these values to say eh, 250. And when we do that, you'll notice that this little thing appears here right where our original color was. And that's kind of annoying to do to get back to your original color, but that's the only way I know how to do it. So, yeah, <laughs> I guess that's that. Um, at least for the stroke color. If this is a other color, we're going to go ahead and kind of take this down a little bit before I show you guys. There we go. But if this was our original color, all we would do is, let's say we wanted a color down here or something, or that's in the same layer, all we would do is go over here to our color picker, and uh, our eyedropper, and click on the color, and it would change it to the, okay, never mind. Um, hmm. 
Okay, so that didn't go the way I wanted. But nonetheless, you guys pretty much get what I mean. Uh, say we chose this color, but we didn't want that color. We just use this, and boom, we're right back to where we were. So let's go ahead and simply paste the value back in there. There we go. Change the value down by like uh, five or so. There we go. Get the color. Go back to our create shape. Click once. Press space to apply. Enter to uh, kind of, or rather space, or yeah, space to apply. Enter to confirm. And when we render that, control R. There we go. We now have our uh, nice little head here, and everything looks exactly how we want it to. So that's good. Um, now let's say we want to go and change the line width. Now I don't really want to spend too much time on this, but there's two ways to do this. You could either go over here to the line width and kind of change its value up to something like, eh, I don't know, 5. Do the same thing. There we go. And let's actually go over to something more noticeable like 10. And there we go. Now let's go back to uh, 4 now, because I think 4 is pretty good. Alright, now actually, you know, let's put that back to 10 really quick. There we go. Now let's say we want to go ahead and manually kind of change these down. So to do that, we can either choose the create shape, the select shape, the select points, or rather the translate points, or the select points. Now that's a nice thing about Anime uh, Studio. It has a lot of ways to select objects, and there's not just one way to do that. So, um, and that uh, goes for some of the um, other options as well, such as these paint options. So I really like that. That's really nice. Um, but what we're going to go and do is um, just choose one of these, either translate points, select points, um, or, you know, one of these other options here. Go down here to the um, line width, or hotkey W. And once you have all your points selected, you can just click anywhere and drag. And you'll notice when you first click, your lines automatically go to zero. Now you can also change these to something up here. Hit enter. I'm going to go ahead and change that, uh, that back down to four. There we go. And just click and drag anywhere. And as you can see, when you do that, you change the line width there. So that's pretty cool. Um, you could also do it on individual points. So let's go ahead and hit enter here. And with your line width tool selected, you can go ahead and select a point and click and drag. And that looks something like a beard, which actually looks kind of cool. And I think I might keep that. That looks kind of neato. All right, so yeah, we're going to keep that there. But it goes for all points in your characters as well. So that's pretty much how that works. So as you can see, I mean, not really too much to get into. Not too complicated to work around. So what we're going to go and do now is go down to our body layer. And we're just going to go ahead and uh, actually skip over this for now. Go to your arm layer here. And I'm just going to go ahead and change this back to black. There we are, and change our arm layer to um, our skin color. I'm going to go and do this for both our arm and our leg layers here. And as you can see, I'm on the wrong layer here. The You'll know um, that you have a layer selected when you see the points on that layer appear. Um, just a little bit of a side note there. I'm going to go and change down my line width to, uh, let's go 5. There we go. Okay, that looks good. And let me see here. Yeah, I believe that's five as well. All right, so anyway, I'm just going to go and do the same thing to all of these layers here. There we go. All right, now you'll notice that we've left out one final thing, our body layer. Now, really quickly before I actually go over that, uh, I just want to let you guys know that I don't remember if I actually told you guys this in the beginning or not. Um, we're not going to actually go ahead and add a face to our character um, because we will be doing that later. But for now, this is kind of a test character or character that we're going to be using um, just to kind of give examples of how animation and rigging and stuff works. Um, but regardless, we will add um, a face to a kind of a character later to come. Uh, so don't worry about that. Uh, for now at least, but what we're going to go and do now is actually add some textures to our character here. And to do that, what we're going to go and do is actually create a character, or rather create a texture first. So I've opened a uh, program called Microsoft Paint, for those of you guys who are just a bit unfamiliar with this little program, but most of you guys for the most part should be uh, familiar with how this character, or rather with how this program works, and for the most part what it is, um, because a lot of people that are watching these tutorials are most likely PC users and uh, stuff like that. Now for Mac, I believe you guys have your own kind of a uh, program as well for painting and such uh, and drawing. But anyway, what I'm going to go and do to create a texture is, first of all, what is a texture? Well, to give a brief information on a texture, a texture is a piece of, um, kind of like a piece of art, I guess, that you can apply to things like characters or objects. And um, if you take a picture of, say, like a rock, and you want to make a realistic looking rock texture, you can go ahead and take that picture that you took of the rock and paste it onto your object. And obviously it will look like a somewhat real rock and um, all that kind of stuff. So those are pretty much the basic um, points of textures and texturing. Um, now what we're going to go and do is create just a simple texture here. 
Um, and I've made this a hundred by a hundred pixels. Of course, you can make this larger if you want, but this is just an example texture. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a, a little smiley face shirt here, and go and choose the circle tool. Do, do, do. And I'm using um, Microsoft uh, Paint 7. Um, earlier versions work as well. All you need is a basic picture here. Control Z and Control v or Control Z or Control. C I don't know why I can't say that. Control C and Control V to paste, which I did not do there. And there we go. And I'm just going to go ahead and make a simple little smiley face shirt here. And what did I do? Okay, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and put that there. And uh, <laughs> it's probably just because my recording software is on right now. And everything's going a bit slower than I would like it to. But just gonna go ahead and make a simple little smiley face thing here. Here we go. And there we go. That looks good. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and save my texture off as, um, you can save it off either, uh, either as a PNG, JPEG, and I'm not sure about BMP. But for now, I'm just going to go and go a PMG image, save it in my uh, pictures here. I'm just going to go ahead and save it as um, do, 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 texture. Uh, texture test. There we go. I'm going to go and close paint now. And I'm going to go ahead and click on my body layer now. And I'm going to go ahead and go choose my create shape tool. And click on my little body layer. And go over here to the effects um, area in the little styles palette. And I'm gonna go and go to image texture, and go to select tail or select tail, select texture. Um, now you could either choose tile or don't repeat. Now I'm gonna go and choose don't repeat because tile will basically make it so it will keep going over and over and over again. Whereas don't repeat will just place one kind of image on there, and um, you can pretty much feel free to edit it as you like. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and select texture now that I've chose my don't repeat option. Go to my pictures library and find where I saved my picture here, which is do 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 do. There we go, our little uh, texture chest. <laughs> and you guys, as you guys have seen, uh, I do have quite a bit of um, pictures in my picture library, which are not organized, and I kind of need to. Uh, <laughs> uh, I guess kind of organize those. But anyway, um, you'll see now that we have a little picture here that we've created. Hit OK and hit space to apply that and enter to confirm that. Now you'll see um, our picture is a bit too big for our guy's body. Now to change that we're going to actually go over here to our select shape and you notice when we do that that we get this little kind of dot here. Now if we click on the bottom dot you'll notice that we're moving our texture around so that's pretty cool. That's one step to kind of uh, getting it to where we want. However what we want to do is shrink our texture so we go up to uh, here to our top dot click and drag down a little bit and you'll notice that we can actually kind of change the uh, way that this is actually facing as well so that's kind of a neat little uh, feature that they've added however I'm just gonna go ahead and hold shift click and drag down and move this over a little bit and there we go and we render control R we have a little character with a little face and little arms and stuff and although that doesn't really look too nice on our character I'm gonna go and keep it nonetheless and there we go so I'm gonna go ahead and go back to our select shapes just so I don't have that little dot there that looks like a really creepy nose. <laughs> Alright, and there we go, guys. That is pretty much it for what we're going to be doing for our character, um, at least in this episode. In the next episode, we will be going over some rigging for our character, getting him set up for animation, putting some bones on him, some constraints, getting some IK and first kinematics and stuff in there, and all that fun stuff. However, for now, I'm going to go ahead and end off this video because it has been going on for quite a while, I believe. And um, I believe we've considered a, um, or rather covered a considerable amount of uh, content here. So I'm going to go ahead and end it off and uh, feel free to comment right on this video and uh, even subscribe to my channel for upcoming uh, updates on brand new videos and such including the tutorial series videos on Anime Studio as seen here. And until next time guys, this has been Rex Furry and I will see you guys next episode. Or well, next video, which may be an episode, may not. You guys know the drill. Uh, anyway, I'll see you guys next video.